checking a few things. Um, I've got the frame up on jack stands now. Just slugging away. Uh, I realized how much things are moving. The distance uh, jacking up the front end till it picks up the weight and then letting the front end hang on the jack stands down here. The distance from here to here changes by three-eighths of an inch. So the nose dives three-eighths of an inch and it bends the cowl. So I have got to get this thing trammed up so that all of this stuff goes in square. So now I can see with the connector on there, if you're un you know in stock configuration up here and you're going over bumps, these are trying to move back and forth. The connectors are trying to move back and forth an eighth of an inch. And that, that plus cornering loads, the instability of the shock tower is what tore out the those spot welds in the top of the cowl. Yeah, an eighth of an inch, back and forth, back and forth, every time you go over a bump like this with the car. You can imagine how long is it going to take to tear out the, the uh, spot welds. So I've decided I'm going to, I'm doing some reinforcing. I have ordered torque boxes. So I'm going to put in the torque boxes on both sides to stiffen this area up. Uh, I've also got an idea, have an idea of taking some 70 thousandths wall that's what this stuff is anyway, 70 thousandths. Uh, maybe it's specced out at 65, I don't know. And what I want to do is after the torque boxes are in, I'm going to weld in this like that. So it'll be spot welded through the pinch wheel this way and through the firewall on two sides. And it will actually be an assembly where it's like that and then I curve another piece and it's going to weld in right here so it'll be a solid piece that goes from here to there down to the front of the torque box like that and then there'll be another piece of this that mounts right here and it welds right there and it welds to a plate right there on the A-pillar. So I'll put a plate right in here, weld a plate right there, and then this will sit just like that. So then I have myself a little triangle here. And then I'll take some of this, put weld a plate on the end, a triangle plate there, so it'll mount to these like this and bolt to the same bolts as the Monte Carlo bar. So what that gives me is another triangle. So I, I'll be triangulated between the Monte Carlo bar across to the other side and the export brace. Uh, that should really stiffen up the front end. I'm triangulating the whole front end with a part that's going to be sort of invisible in here and it just bolts in and bolts out for suspension work when I need to do it but these support braces will be welded in as part of the body and it's completely hidden by the fender so you won't even see it that's my idea more triangulation for the front end uh, there's my idea and I'm running with it so I clean up the A-pillar and get it prepped for welding on a plate of 80,000 steel. I drilled it for plug welding, but I also seam welded it for a little extra strength there. Now I'm working on the actual reinforcement structures that are going to be welded into the body. So you'll notice there's a curved piece there. Uh, unfortunately, I lost the video of my bending of that tube. I just used a template and heated it with a torch. And whatever spot needed a little extra curve, I would just heat that spot and give it a little tweak. And so that was it. 
So what I'm doing now is making the inserts that go inside the tube that uh, hold the nuts. Uh, I'm using the 80,000 metal again so that essentially it's a nice thick washer and, and a reinforced area that the nut is welded to on the inside of the tube. The whole idea being that um, there's going to be a considerable amount of force here, both compression and extension, and I need it to stay in place. It's uh, a little bit of work. I made sure that all of the tubes were enclosed on the ends so that they would be weather tight, except where the bolt goes in, and I will seam seal the whole thing when I've finished with it. Here you can see I've made a little notch on the curved part, and that's because the uh, this curved part has to have room for the pinch weld between the apron and the firewall. The whole idea is to get this structure flush so that it uh, that welds up without having to bend the metal. Now here I am fitting the lower portion of the reinforcement. I had to make it a little thinner. I wanted the uh, tube to be square in the joint between the pinch weld and the firewall, but the torque box sits a little further more proud of that. So I had to cut a small portion of it away in order to get it to lay in there and fit perfectly and not distort the metal when I clamped it and welded it in. Trying to be neat about it, dressing off all the welds and making it party, you know. Well, it's finally time to weld up the assembly. Here's hoping it all fits good. Took, uh, took a little while to get this all done and figured out and everything, but it looks good and it fit good. And now it's time to weld. Here's my first reinforcement. Goes along the cowl, down the side panel and ties into the torque box. It's all welded up, got nuts welded up inside the uh, tubes here. See, there it is. It turned out really good. It was going to be my prototype, but it has turned out so good that I can use it. Okay, I'm prepping for welding. You know, a lot of thought goes into this. Uh, I get worried that I'm about to do something permanent and I need to make sure that uh, I'm doing the right thing. Okay, so now I'm just uh, drilling the holes for the plug welds. I've made up my mind. I'm doing it. It's going in. Always a consideration. You'll notice also that I uh, take the weight off that jack stand that's under the A-pillar. I had to put this corner under tension because when I welded in the torque box, the hydraulic jack that I had under the front of the car was losing pressure when I was welding in the torque box and I ended up with an eighth inch droop on that left apron. So I put it under tension with the weight of the motor and everything in the car. See, I'm doing it. Uh, just before I weld the stiffener to the torque box. Working on my engineering project to uh, stiffen the chassis. Here's the assembly all welded in. You can see, welded all the way around. 
the inside of the firewall. And surprisingly, this is amazingly, it's a little hot to handle here still, but uh, this is amazingly rigid. I mean, everything. Once you get it welded up, it's just really rigid. That's the idea. Getting close to having this piece done. I gotta whack this off and put the nut in the end. Uh, and then this can be welded in. So things are moving along, but it is July 4th and uh, I've been volunteered. So I have to stop working. Later. It occurred to me that there were... I almost wish I would have done this. Um, stiffen this part of the cowl as well. Could have made these stiffeners here. This portion here, cut a little, make a slit right here and run that all the way through and stiffen the entire pinch weld. Because while this part is now incredibly rigid, you can't even think about moving those. But this one, as you can see, with my bare hands, I can just bend it. So this mounting point for the export brace is not as strong or as rigid as it should be. Um, had I reinforced this entire thing, um, the amount of rigidity in here would have been a lot higher. Another thing, if you want to take the reinforcement to the next level, would be to weld in a 080 plate right here that makes this intersection here, and then weld a diagonal brace this way, you know, that comes up and meets up here in this corner. This, see this stiffener here is tied into the torque box. So you're not going to get any compression this way or flexibility going up and down this way. You're not going to get it going back this way. And if this was reinforced like this, then this whole structure here would be pretty rigid and the whole thing would have to flex and move. So energy from the frame and the rocker and everything would all be rigid up to this point here. So it was my opinion that this was enough because basically all I'm doing is making triangles. So this is my first triangle. Vertically, I now have more triangles. And basically, this whole thing for me was being driven by the fact that the shock towers moving is what tore out these spot welds, which is what caused the water leaks, which is what, why I'm having to do all of that. You can see that I, with all of this reinforcement here, torque box, gusset, and having my little stiffeners tied into the torque box and across to the apron and back to the A-pillar, this makes a pretty hard corner and that was the whole idea was to harden up this corner because when this shock tower starts to move there's going to be a lot of force placed on that point right there well see once again i have the strut the wrong way it's already cut off at the angle it needs to be right there anyway now you get the idea I can't weld this in, and I'm not going to weld this strut in and do the final fitment of it until the car is sitting on all four wheels. So there's my idea. I'm just making triangles. This one here that supports the A-pillar and that hardens up that front point of the cow. And these here. It should stabilize the shock tower both vertically and horizontally. Thanks for watching. I hope you like my idea. I know Betsy will.